So welcome everyone. In this short video, I would like to present our paper, Selection as Snapshot, and it's about how visuals contribute to the selection and avoidance of political news in Q-rich media settings. And I would like to give this presentation with Thomas Powell, and also on behalf of Tony van der Meer, who uh, couldn't be in this video, but also worked on this paper. So what did we do? First of all, the context of our study. As we all know, the online news media environment is mostly multimodal, which means that there's not just text trying to draw people's attention, but also visuals that can actually help to raise the salience of news issues and help to motivate people into the selection of political news. We also therefore have this uh, uh, Q-rich information setting in which visuals and text are oftentimes combined and present themselves as exposure options that news consumers can choose from. However, there's another contextual factor in the online news media environment that should be taken into account. And that is that political news is oftentimes not just presented uh, in isolation, but also alongside other selection options that compete for attention. For example, news on entertainment and news on sports. And from selective exposure literature, we also know that people are most likely to select political news when it resonates with their prior views, also known as a confirmation bias. So together we have a context of online news uh, media selection in which visuals, uh, uh, the, the contextual factors of political news, so sports and entertainment, and confirmation biases together may drive the selection of political news. However, to date, we know very little about how these different factors interact together. So we have uh, little research on the interaction of visuals, the context surrounding visual information and confirmation biases, and how that together predicts selective exposure. So this is the key question of our study. We want to understand how uh, selection is predicted in these Q-rich media settings where visuals uh, and entertainment news also compete for the audience attention. So what do we know theoretically about this? From multimodal framing literature, we know that images are emotionally engaging uh, and they're attention grabbing. So people are likely to be drawn to visual information and visuals may motivate more uh, attention and, and may draw people into the news more than text. So this is also where our first hypothesis comes from. We believe and we expect that pairing a headline with a visual should really motivate more selection than when such uh, visuals are absent from a news environment. However, we look at selection uh, in the context, in the wider context, uh, the context of how political news is presented. And there we also believe that images that are drawing attention to uh, specific news cues may also distract political news selection. So when visuals are presented alongside entertainment or sports news, they may also motivate selection and motivate selection away from political news. So our second hypothesis is really about this distracting role that images may play on the selection of political news. However, we also look at the mechanisms of motivated reasoning. And it can indeed be argued that people are more likely to select political news when this political news reassures their prior attitude. Uh, however, visuals may also play a role in this confirmation bias uh, because visuals are known to less directly convey uh, literal meaning and leaving more room for open interpretations. So people can uh, actively decode political news, which may also potentially mean uh, that a confirmation bias plays a, a less prominent role because people can overcome uh, their selection biases because they can interpret the political news as they, uh, they have more freedom in interpreting political news when it's presented with a visual. However, we have very little uh, theoretical backdrop for this expectation, and it could also be argued that visuals may motivate more reliance on motivated reasoning because of its emotionally listening role, for example. And that's why we raise a more exploratory research questions whether visuals may also increase the selection of cross cutting political news stories. So, in that sense, we test whether visuals also may have positive ramifications in the online news environment by motivating a more diverse news diet and drawing people to news that is not really resonating with their uh, prior views. 
we also aim to look beyond just the selection of political news and look into how the inclusion of visuals in these two rich media environments may also have effects. And there we also rely on multimodal framing literature, uh, for example, that images are expected to uh, establish a bond with, re uh, uh, with uh, receivers and an emotional connection and also offer a direct index of reality that uh, attracts people to new stories. That's why we also expect that once uh, political news is selected, that visuals play a role and augment framing effects and therefore uh, that visual communication that combines visuals and text has a stronger effect on issue agreement and exposure to text alone. And again, we uh, expect the role of a confirmation bias and motivated reasoning, arguing that this effect is strongest when a political news item is congruent with people's pre-existing attitudes. Finally, we also look at emotional responses and a more uh, complex model where we expect emotional responses to uh, affect issue agreements uh, with the multimodal stimulus. And this is sort of a more complex uh, moderated mediation model that we also test in our uh, experiment. Now, Tom is going to talk a bit more about the methods we used and the results that were uh, found in our study. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, so our method, um, this involved an experiment which we um, put together in Qualtrics um, and we filled it in the US using two um, contexts. So news about, refugee, about refugees and news about gun control. So two, uh, two subjects that are highly polarized, um, have strong um, uh, issue publics. So therefore we might, um, yeah, we would expect that people um, would uh, that we would see some uh, selective exposure into, into their prior views. Um, what we did in setting up the experiment was take good care to um, um, have some rigorous controls um, to control for potential artifacts. Um, this included pre-testing our stimuli, so pre-testing uh, the images we used, the text we used, um, to make sure that they conveyed the appropriate bias that we wanted, um, as well as that we, um, yeah, when we coupled the images and the text, uh, so these, these uh, you see some examples here, so the headlines and the images, we made sure that any differences we would later see might not be due to the specific coupling of specific images and text. So we produced diff um, several different versions of our stimuli, uh, which included uh, multiple different types of uh, pairings of the headlines and images. Um, we also counterbalanced um, and randomize the presentation of, uh, of all the stimuli. Um, so we can, fairly com um, we can be fairly reassured in saying that the results are not due to these types of artifacts. Um, more on that, obviously, in the paper. Um, talking about the design, this, the design was split into two phases, largely. One is the selection phase, and two is the effects phase. Um, in the experiment, um, all participants saw two news, news feeds so one for refugees and one for gun control. That was one after another, and the order of those were randomized. Um, when they saw a news feed, each participant saw three news items. So two non-political news items, one about entertainment, one about sports, uh, and one political news item. Uh, and that was about either the refugee or the gun control issue. In the two non-political news items, our manipulation was that these items either had an image or did not have an image. And for the political news items, the manipulations were that the news item either had an image or did not have an image. And we also manipulated the bias um, or the stance that was um, shown in the news items. So that was pro-attitudinal, counter-attitudinal or balanced for each of those topics. And we determined these by basically presenting images and text with um, yeah, different stances on these images. So for the refugee issue, a pro-refugee stance being um, showing refugees that are victimized. Um, for example, in the refugee crisis uh, back in 2015 and onwards. Um, and on the other side, a counter, um, a counter frame of uh, refugees as hostile intruders. So what you see here in the image of uh, hostile of refugees standing near border fences, throwing stones and acting aggressively. We also had a balanced condition where we combined or presented 
uh, balanced headlines or um, put two images together. So for example, the image that you see here with a victimized uh, refugee image. Um, and these form our pro-attitudinal, counter-attitudinal and balanced uh, conditions. Um, in order to fully achieve that, we asked people at the start of the experiment what their views were on these two issues, refugees and gun control. Um, and by doing so, we were able to um, basically split people off into these three different conditions, pro, counter and balance. Um, upon seeing these news feeds, they, uh, participants were asked to select um, just one item, which they would most like to read in their daily news consumption. Um, and they did that for both of these news feeds. In the effects phase, um, participants were shown the political items that they did select. Um, so it could be that our particip participants didn't select any news political news items at all, and those people went straight to the end of the experiment. Um, but for the people that did select a political news item, they read an article um, that you see in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, uh, if you click on my card. And the, uh, yeah, and you can't see the whole of the, uh, the whole of this article, but um, yeah, this one, this article is about uh, positive representations of refugees. Um, so when participants saw this, they were asked to read it, and thereafter they were respond, asked to respond to several items measuring issue agreements, so agreement with the stance presented in the presentation, in the article and also their emotions that they felt when reading the article. Uh, yep, and so next slide. And what were our results? So we conducted several different types of analysis. Um, the uh, analysis about selection was using um, regression um, and the analyses about um, the effects were uh, generally using ANAVAS or uh, mediation analysis. Uh, and in the next few slides, I'll present the basic uh, key findings according to the hypotheses that Michael talked through. Um, so the first hypothesis regarding, um, yeah, whether a political headline, a political news item was in selected more often when the visual was present. We actually didn't find support for this, which was fairly surprising. Um, one would expect that a image would grab the attention of a viewer and draw them in uh, and then lead them to select a political item more often. Um, a potential explanation that we thought for this was that um, compared to many other studies looking at selected exposure, we presented a, um, a higher choice selection environment, um, including visuals, but also including uh, different stances and different genres. So we thought that this might be an explanation for this. Um, hypothesis two, we found support for um, our expectation that the images in the uh, non-political news items, so the entertainment and the sports news items, would distract uh, viewers from selecting uh, political items that were next uh, to these, uh, these non-political news items. So, um, and I think this is one of the first studies to show that um, when you put images into um, kind of the surrounding context of people's uh, news consumption environment that they can act as distractors. Um, the next set, uh, the, the research question, which focused on motivated reasoning, um, we found very strong, and this was our most robust finding effect for the fact that visuals actually lead to increased, um, uh, to increased selection of prior to news. So instead of leading to more cross-cutting news, it actually led to more um, partisan selective exposure. So a kind of relatively um, relatively negative in terms of normative, uh, normatively speaking, uh, relatively negative uh, output. And so what you see in these graphs here, um, when the political image was uh, absent, the three bars that represent the different issue stances, they're slightly flatter than these three bars on the right hand side of, uh, of these two charts. You can see the, the differences between these three um, bars uh, are larger on these uh, at the right hand side when the, when the political image was present. Um, so 
that's, that suggests that basically uh, the selection of these uh, congruent, attitude incongruent um, news items was actually uh, kind of amplified when there was an image present. Uh, the next uh, set of hypotheses, moving on to the, the effects uh, phase of the study. Um, we had three hypotheses here, and the key finding was that, uh, for at least for hypothesis three, was that political items with images were produced stronger effects of, um, on issue agreement um, compared to text alone. And that was regardless, actually, of um, people's prior attitudes. So when there was an image present in the article, they tended to agree with it more than when there was um, just a, 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 an article that was text alone. And that didn't matter to their pre-existing, um, their pre-existing attitudes didn't matter. So that hypothesis four, uh, we didn't find support for that. Um, and we did find support for our mediation hypothesis. Uh, and you see that on the right hand side here. Um, when images were present in these news articles, um, people felt more sympathy, more surprise, and more anger, depending on the frame of the uh, of the, uh, the presented article, which then had a mediating effect on issue agreement. Um, and for the exact directions of these effects, you can look into uh, look into the paper. Um, we found this mediation model, and um, this mediation model has also been tested in um, previous papers, and so to an extent, we can expect that. What does this mean? So our discussion. Um, I'll start with kind of the, the summary takeaway points. And those are these three top bullets here. Um, the visuals can act as distractors from political news. So um, when they're present in the kind of high, um, the, the high choice uh, news environment that we experience today, visuals can actually distract uh, from political news um, when they're placed on, for example, entertainment news items. Um, visuals can also reinforce attitude congruent selective exposure. Um, so they don't necessarily include, uh, encourage cross-cutting exposure. And so the addition of certain types of images um, can indeed lead to um, yeah, selection into these uh, echo chambers of uh, attitude. And the final um, kind of key takeaway was that visuals trigger emotions, which lead to a stronger issue agreement regardless of issue style. Um, there were some limitations, obviously, of this study. Um, even though we presented a context which was um, more high choice than very many other um, experimental contexts, and we combined these different factors that include genre, uh, multimodality, and um, yeah, different attitude stances. Nevertheless, we presented um, two news feeds um, in a Facebook style uh, context. And so the realism of this study could be improved and that would be a good direction for future work. Um, a second limitation was that the effects phase was somewhat endogenous to the selection phase. So people only saw articles and people only saw certain um, stances of these articles when they were selected on. And so therefore we cannot, um, strictly speaking, we cannot pull apart um, the effects of um, attitude and the attitude stance of our articles in our results. However, we would argue that um, this is very much the way in which we consume news. And so in a way, in that sense, um, this is a fairly realistic way of presenting and uh, looking at uh, these effects that we show in our, uh, in our, in our finding. Um, to end, um, finish with some uh, practical implications of this study is um, yeah, we're, we're seeing more and more now, um, for example, political news um, popping up on the same news feeds or the same news screens as entertainment news. Um, and because of our findings that show that entertainment news, especially with a visual, can distract from political news, um, we would suggest that publishers and editors should be wary of really mixing these um, different genres, uh, and especially wary of when they apply and add images and what types of images uh, to these news items. Um, and the second kind of key takeaway is that this wariness of editors that I just thought about should also um, be applied to attitude bias. So um, it's fairly easy to be aware and control bias and express balance in a headline, um, slightly more difficult in a visual. And I think uh, a good tip from us would be 
for editors and publishers to be more visually um, kind of more, more visually savvy, or more um, try and make steps to pay more attention to these visuals. And based on the findings that show that they can um, increase uh, attitude, congruent selective exposure, um, try and have a look and pay more attention to bias in these visuals too. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening um, to this presentation by me and Michael. Um, and look forward to seeing you at the conference.